Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to winter chores. You're still thinking about the dog, aren't you? He's doing very well and soon one winter chore that I'll have to do is fit him with tiny adorable snow boots. But until then, in the last few days of winter, it's all about snowbound duties that I've found myself doing since buying a house in the American Midwest. So if this is the sort of outrageous content that you're seeking and you're not yet subscribed to Lost in the Pond, do that now! Back when I rented, I barely knew that these chores even existed. But having closed on my house this winter, it's fair to say that I have not sat down since January 14th. And that dog video. And this one, obviously. Anyway, without any further achoo, here are winter chores that I only did after buying a Midwestern house. Let's start by talking about the thermostat. After all this time, I don't really remember how it worked in Britain, but in the United States rented apartments, your heat is controlled by your landlord. The problem with this is you never know what you're gonna get. It could be too hot, depriving you of a good night's sleep, or too cold, depriving you of the chance to parade around in your underpants. But now that I'm a homeowner in the Midwest, I'm 100% in charge of my own temperatures, as long as it's the temperature that my wife wants. During winter, this is typically set between 68 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit in the daytime and 63 degrees at night. Of course, having a puppy changes things. According to Google, he's more than comfortable with our daytime setting, but we've had to keep it up at night because anything below this is bad and will cause the dog to spontaneously combust. Let me know in the comments what you keep it at. In the very short time that I've owned my own Midwestern home, I've learned one weird trick that the government doesn't want you to know about. When it comes to tasks around the house, just watch what Kevin from Home Alone does and strive to do the opposite. For instance, on the eve of a big freeze, instead of pouring water on your steps, try putting salt down instead. Unless two really dodgy blokes show up in a van, then go to town with the hose. When I lived in England, this wasn't such a problem because the temperatures didn't routinely plummet to a level not entirely fit for humans. Furthermore, back when I was renting, the salting was taken care of by my landlord, maintenance staff, or a magical team of salt fairies. I was never quite clear on that. And there's a bit of a knack to it. Sometimes you put down just the right amount of salt and at other times you put down way too much, just like the staff at Wendy's. Owning a home in the Midwest means that you're not just looking out for your own welfare, but occasionally that of other humans, and sometimes children. A good neighborly thing to do is to put salt down on the stretch of sidewalk immediately in front of your house. When the ice tries to form, science intervenes and says, no, not today, you ice cold ice. But it sure is weird where the mind takes you. As I salted the sidewalk earlier this week, I could mentally hear the voice of suburban Sue from across the road. And I just pictured her turning to her husband and saying, ooh, look at him, he's got his little salt bag out again. What does he think this street is? One giant plate of fish and chips, but in an American accent. But Suburban Sue has got me all wrong, right? Because I put malt vinegar on my fish and chips and I'd love to see her scrutinize that. She absolutely would. Of course, here in the Midwest, salt is not the only white substance to hit the ground, especially when you have cardinals flying about. But at this time of year, it's all about snow. No amount of salt is gonna stop heavy snowfall from settling, which is why I recently purchased one of these. Actually, two of these. And I know what you're thinking, ooh, Lawrence, why do you have two completely identical snow shovels? And the answer is simple, I've no idea. But it's important to shovel snow off your front step. After all, you don't wanna drag in that snow and get it all over your rug, because your dog will do that for you. Also, depending on the amount of snow that you get, you might not be able to open your front door. But in that scenario, I'm not sure how you'd even make it to your step. I mean, I'm not just gonna jump out of my bathroom window again. When I was a renter, this step was magically taken care of before I'd even woken up, which to be fair was usually around 2 p.m. But I have to say, there is something oddly cathartic about showing the snow who's boss, even if the balance of power shifts somewhat when it falls on you from a roof. According to the Municipal Code of Chicago, we property owners are responsible for clearing the sidewalk of not just ice, but snow. And I know that because Suburban Sue has the Municipal Code embossed on a yard sign. Sadly, when the recent snowfall came, most of it had melted before I could set up the camera and shovel my part of the sidewalk. So, my team decided to use stock footage of a Midwestern man shoveling his. We reasoned that if we only showed him from behind, my subscribers would be none the wiser. My team deserves to be recognised for their groundbreaking work. 
work. That said, an anonymous chap was never going to be able to fully replicate my world-renowned shoveling technique. Basically, it involves me moving my shovel through the snow like it were an automobile. None of these short, swift lunges. I just drive on through the snow without stopping, only tossing my collection after several feet. In fact, if you keep watching, you'll be able to see that technique in action in approximately 45 seconds exactly. Anyone who knows me knows that I work very hard on doing the bare minimum. So when it comes to salting the pathways in my backyard, I compromise by not salting the pathways in my backyard. And this is mostly fine because if I do want to get to the garage, I'll just walk across the lawn. That way if I do fall over, I'll land in soft grass and dog sh that said, it is important to at least see the pathways and that's where shoveling comes in. What you're about to see is a rapid fire video montage that YouTubers often use to make an activity look more exciting than it is. And those are just some of the winter chores that I've had to do since moving into this Midwestern house. Who knows, there might even be a part two to this video if I ever have to knock snow off my roof or do battle with the White Witch. <laughs> to be clear, that was a reference to Narnia, not Suburban Sioux. And I know that because Suburban Sioux has the municipal code. <laughs> uh, uh, people might think I'm an, an ogre. It's funny, isn't it, how Brits and Americans spell ogre the exact same way, even though America usually changes those RE endings. That's it for this video. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that I don't have to. If your favorite winter chore was missing from this video, there's a good chance that it featured in this one. So watch this next. These videos are made possible by my patrons. So support Lost in the Pond by going to patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye.